And you see, see the numbers the going on the top? They're starting to record? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yes, it is moving. Okay, so we're on. Right on. So, so I have no idea what we're, we're going, going to talk about today. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> it's, it's one, one of the, the trademarks of my uh, podcast. podcast. I don't generally uh, you know, make, make a big, big schedule, schedule and stuff because it's your business, you know. I'm good with casual. It's good. I've uh, I've been in Georgina 35 years, and I, this here has been forever. This airport, pretty much forever, yeah. Yeah, and so um, and I've been interviewing a lot of people, and I've just started up during this pandemic, kind of by coincidence, but the issue that comes up all the time. So maybe if we could talk um, first a little bit about parachuting, like the parachute school, what it encompasses, why people come here. Mm -hmm. Who the hell wants, wants to jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Like mm -hmm. all, uh, what's behind that in, in a lot of people's mind? If you have some experience about that, that'd oh, be yeah. sure. So, so do you want to talk a bit about parachuting itself and, and like the, the personal, personal aspects as opposed to the technical? Because it's, been it's a bit of, bit of an open-ended question. Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, that's my favorite kind. It's, good. it's a good thing. Um, well, having watched, I don't know probably 30, 40,000 people make their first jumps ever. Wow. I can tell you that the range of motivations I see among people is, is very wide. I imagine it. Um, certainly there are a lot of people who just want to experience it. They've heard it's exciting and that's good. You get a lot of people who are a little bit uncomfortable about the concept, but they want to push themselves, get outside their normal comfort zone. Sure. Get a fair bit of that. And of course, you get the people who are like, oh, adrenaline, let's go. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <clears throat> those, those are the, the larger categories around. But yeah, motivations are, are very wide ranging. I guess so. the, uh, my, uh, well, we talked a little bit about my personal desire as far as parachuting is concerned. I could never get it done. Because for me to challenge myself, I wanted to go up without any instruction. And just before I jump out of the plane, have you tell me, okay, this is what you got to do when you get out there and see if I would do it or not. <laughs> but obviously, there's nobody in the right mind in the, in the industry that would allow me to do that. And so it's, it's a challenge I'll never succeed in. So I'm hoping to do a jump here and make it the end of this podcast when I'm done, like in a week or two, whenever, whenever you can get back to single. So... Mm -hmm. How um, how long have you personally been running this? Been running it since 2002, so this is 18, 18 years, 18 right? years now. Wow! Yeah. So that must have been quite a uh, quite a uh, kick in the pants for the, when the February rolled in and the. Well, yeah, the, the, it's certainly something that impacts us significantly. Uh, certainly the lockdown, well, that was easy. We just closed. But, yeah. you know, half of that was through the spring where we don't get a whole lot done anyway because mud season. Uh, but, yeah, we had a, a pretty late start into the season. And once we did get going, we're, we're operating at uh, 50, 60 percent of normal capacity, which is about all I want to handle right now yeah, because with the, with the extra complications, the paperwork, the health checks, sanitizing this, that, and the other thing, yelling at people to keep their masks on. There's a lot of extra work this season. Yeah, no doubt. Eh? That I'm, I'm not accustomed to. So. so I'm keeping myself plenty busy, that's for sure, yeah, operating at half capacity even. So I'm just trying to figure out what about, um, I guess... The, uh, what uh, what would the, be somebody that wants to just do their one jump? The first day, the, the, I guess the bulk of people always wanted the parachute and they do it once and then go from there. I don't know how that works. Yeah, I don't have firm numbers on this, but certainly I'd be confident saying that at least 95% of people come up, make the one jump and don't make another jump after that. Right. But they've had the experience and... It, Given that, you know, I've made over a thousand jumps and I still remember my first jump pretty clearly, I'm sure that anybody who's made the one jump is, is very likely to remember that experience for the rest yeah, of their forever, life. Yeah, eh? So that's, it, it's a valuable memory. It's a good I thing. did, uh, I, I used to scuba dive. Eh? Oh, right on. I got my patty license. I still have it now. But <laughs> I used to go in Cuba a lot and I had this one dive master. His name, well, I won't tell his name because of what I did, but uh, <laughs> there's two of them. The one guy, he's a real good friend of mine. I said, so what's the deepest you ever dove, eh? And he said, once I did a bounce dive 300 feet, like 95 meters. 
but you got to get down right away. He was telling me you got to get down right away, and then you because you need all your air to get back up again. Yeah, you need to decompress. So, needless to say, shortly after, one day I did my 300 feet and come insane, insane. But I got it done, and uh, would never do it again. It's a crazy thing to do at the time, but uh, I took my time coming back up, and I did all yeah. that. But I was really lucky because. I, you, you're drunk by the time you get down at that stage when yeah. you're scuba diving and yeah. uh, so I was lucky because I was dropping like a rock because your buoyancy compensator just squishes right down and you don't have the presence of mind until you realize and I was lucky because it went I, I when I got bottomed out there was a spot there and then I got gathered myself and filled up again and then got back up again and crazy thing to do I just want it but he had done it, so I said, well, then I have to do it, right? So, <laughs> Yeah. So, well, I, I, that's something that I have to explain around here on a fairly frequent basis is the fact that somebody got away with something once does not mean that everybody is going to get away with it all the no, time. No, it, it so was an insane thing to do be at careful. the time. But it was, uh, and I'm, I'm 63 now, so I won't be doing any more of those wonderful stuff not the deep ones but <laughs> no. of course around here it's it would be very difficult to get down that deep anywhere in yeah. ontario well so, i you yeah. know what normally you know what the, all the best diving is at 20 meters anyway it's all the most colors where the at color 20 meters, is and where the like, animals are yeah. it's the best place so tell me about your first dive it was a long time ago yeah that, right. well, that was 30 years ago now and? My first jump out of that plane that's right behind you. Really? That's well, same that's, airplane. That's hilarious. Same paint job even. Yeah, really. Yes. Nice. It's needed paint for the entirety of that time, but it, uh, the paint doesn't make it fly any better, so we're not in so a hurry what, to get uh, repainted. So where were you? You were living around here at the time? Were you? Uh, that was back when we were when the drop zone was located just outside of Arthur, out oh, yeah. uh, north of Guelph. Yeah, I remember there used to be a big dive school out, out that way. Out in the middle of Guides Country. Yeah. It was a good spot, nice big open space, yeah. And uh, yeah, up to well, at that time it was 2,800 feet, static line jump, get out, arch thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, check thousand. Okay, look at that, I got a parachute, cool, yeah. And so I just did it, and well, the uh. The intention was to, to you know do it once for the experience because I'd, I'd thought for a long time, like more than a decade before, that this was something that I wanted to do. Right. Um, so I went up and did it the once, and I, I wasn't yeah, wasn't a hundred percent satisfied with my performance on the jump. So I said, okay, I'm going to go back and do it another couple and see if I can get myself to do it the way I'm supposed to be doing it. Right. And yeah, here I am, thirty years later, still trying to get it right. Yeah, no kidding. Eh? There's check, always something to improve. I checked the stats, by the way. And uh, just, well, I generally, I, I don't want to talk about anything negative. Things happen, negative happen in any business. But I checked the stats, and, and they're incredibly good for the amount of problems you have in, with the amount of dives in relation to other aspects in life and so on, t chances you take every day. In, in general, the, the most comprehensive statistics I've seen estimate uh, well, fatalities are the only thing that they can count yep. with significant confidence across the whole industry. Yep. But they're saying yep. in the ballpark of one in every 100,000 jumps, they yeah. would expect a fatality. That's what I've seen. I've seen somewhere, a lot, there was a number around there I've seen, and there's probably more people fell off the toilet and knocked their head. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, so. I, I, I don't know anybody who's done that specifically. But well, I actually uh, yes, do, oddly a, enough. Oh, uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, I guess... The talk a bit about the uh, prep, maybe prep for a dive. So if somebody wants, somebody wants to come here, they look up the number, they call you, and, and then you, so you have an appointment to come if it's for the one day, one dive? Most of our first time jumpers at this point are doing the tandem jump, oh, which yeah. is relatively straightforward that way because training right. only takes about a half hour as compared to the solo first jump where training takes about five hours. Right. Um, but either way, actually, we haven't started doing solo jumps yet this season because things are a little more complicated this year. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the preparation is straightforward. Either way you're looking at it, the plan is to jump the same day. Tandem goes from a higher altitude, does a longer free fall. Right. Solo jump is done static line, so your main parachute is activated automatically. And right. you're doing a lot on your own on the solo jump, so that's why the training is the bigger component there. Yeah, there is, uh, I guess, what would be, uh, what would be the most, most important thing to know? 
There's a hundred things. There's probably a half dozen things right near the top. Um, well, you need to know how to get out of the plane in proper fashion. You need to know how to check your parachute over to make sure it's a good parachute. Right. What to do with it if it's not a good parachute and you have to get rid of it and go to your reserve parachute. How to steer the parachute around the sky and get yourself on the ground in one piece. Right. I guess that's, that's the core of it right there. Right. There are a lot of other little extra tidbits in there, but that's, that, that's the main, main focus. How many, uh, one out of a hundred, how many do you get come and do the course or get involved here that day and end up not jumping? Not very many at all. Nice. Um, I don't think we've had anybody this season who has come up intending to do a jump and not done one. Uh, yeah, in a typical year, we'll have a few people who decide at some point that, no, you know yeah. what, maybe not. <laughs> Uh, but a lot that. of that actually happens when they're, you know, filling out paperwork and they have to write out a bit that says that I realize that I could be injured, killed or crippled and right. that Parachute School of Toronto Limited has no insurance. You, know, you start writing that out, it starts to get a little more well, real. Had, it's, it's good that it gets that real that early because the last thing you need is somebody up there who couldn't handle it. You know? There you go. You ever have any, <laughs> ever have people you have to deal with in the plane that get a little... Oh, nerves in the plane is normal. Yeah, I guess it would that's, be. Like. That's part of learning to be an instructor is learning how to handle different people's reactions to such an unusual environment. And you'll get people, you get the odd one who's all totally gung-ho and you have to say, okay, calm down. Let's, you know, make sure we're doing this all right. But yeah. the, you get a lot more people who are a little nervous and saying, I don't know. And just say, okay, let's take a deep breath. Take our time going around here, chat about anything you need to, make sure you feel comfortable. Yeah. And you, you get accustomed to working with people and, uh, and facilitating their experience that way. And the elation when you get them, it must be, you must get a lot of people when you go to pick them up after their first jump that are just completely elated. Uh, yeah, the vast majority, I would say, in yeah, fact. And that's, that's why I keep doing this. Uh-oh. I just want to... As always, I screwed up and I left my phone on, so I'm going to shut that off now. Uh, yeah, well, mine's going ding, ding in the background now, too. So yes. maybe I'll just check my text sure. message. and go ahead. Uh, yeah, and you get to edit some stuff out. Yeah, me too. I'll, uh, I'll answer. This is a very dear friend. I'm going to interview a mother and a daughter who are teacher's aides. Oh, I don't know. Uh, because of what's coming up. It, yeah, it's, it's a very relevant subject. be interesting, subject, yes. Yeah, so it will be. So I'm just going to let her know that I'll get back to her, that I'm in the middle of something. I hmm. won't edit this out. I never edit out. Hmm. What, do you mean to broadcast the whole thing? Yep. Oh, wow. I never edit out. Because so you're saying I shouldn't curse on here. Well, you, you, <laughs> you can knock yourself out. I don't really care. You're the one who's going to get blamed, not me. That's why I don't edit. It's an R-rated podcast. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, so talk again. What's the funniest response? A few responses well, that you... The, the, I mean, the vast majority of people who come down and land after their first jump are just, you know, bouncing off the walls, happy about it. And, that, yeah. and that's why I do what I do is because nice. like, I get the vicarious excitement out of it from them that way. It's, I, I remember, uh, actually, my, my children's mom, she, she went one or two dives, and I think she went out to Arthur to do it, actually. This was mm. quite a few years ago. And... Uh, I just remember her going through the whole process and she was like the least likely person you would ever expect to do something like that. Mm -hmm. And she did it. And I just remember how elated she was about the whole thing. And uh, it, Getting yourself outside your normal comfort zone and far. achieving your objectives <laughs> is a very empowering feeling. No question. Well, like it's got to be amazing just as a separate experience floating around like a bird my favorite part of the you. whole concept a lot of people like the free fall where yeah you know you, you're just making little bit of little motions and it's controlling what you're doing in the sky and that's it's a unique feeling no yeah. question like and that's what a lot of skydivers really go for but you know, there's a significant subset of us like me who just enjoy getting a parachute over my head and just coast around the sky yeah. and enjoy the view check things out float around so how high do you go for the first single so for a solo jump we go to 3,500 feet oh, yeah. for tandems in the neighborhood of 10,000 feet oh yeah I, I i really seriously do want to do just a solo it's my thing and mm -hmm. uh, i'm a bit of a, i'm so much of a loner 
I have an imaginary friend. <laughs> I don't bother with him much. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so, I mean, that that's that. I guess, um, so what I did want to do, no matter what, uh, we, uh, we can talk about any other subject, but if you could explain for somebody how much, like, uh, do let me know. Because when it brought, people will want to know when they're seeing this, they'll want to know what it costs. Ah, yeah, you know, all right. Well, at the moment, the first jump is two ninety nine plus HST. Right. That's for solo or tandem. Right. Um, if you're coming back to make more jumps, they do get cheaper after the first because generally there isn't as much training involved with the ongoing jumps right. through the progression. Um, and once you get to the point where you have a license, like the guys who are here this afternoon, will be paying. 25 to 35 dollars for a jump but they're using their own equipment and they've got hundreds of jumps experience behind sure them. that's it um i so i guess we've covered most of what uh would be considered really important is there anything that uh how do you how does you make out with the town and your business here nobody bothers you or oh there have regulations? certainly been some some <clears throat> challenges over the years uh, i suppose i'd be curious about that we do get the odd noise <laughs> complaint um yeah. i haven't had any this year but of course it's been a little slower than usual so that helps with that uh yeah we do get a few noise complaints but actually over the last couple of years we've had more people i think coming out from locals coming over to watch what's going on or yeah. come over and visit and say oh yeah we watch you guys from the backyard all the time we love watching the, the excitement from the ground so i've been getting some some actually positive feedback yeah, and more it's recently. nice when people take the time just come on over have a look it, it, it makes a world yourself. of difference yeah, yeah, and it, it makes sure me think there are probably more like that out there because of course somebody who has a beef is much more likely to say something right than somebody who's got yeah, some yeah. positive feedback. So my experience, and I always, you know, I mean, I always like to look at everything in a positive light. Anyway, it's just the way I am. And uh, but ninety nine percent of the this pandemic, for example, I mean, a world pandemic. We're in the middle of it, and somehow we all managed to pull together, get it sorted out. We have to okay, we got a lockdown for and. At the IGA or the IGA, that's how old they are. <laughs> that's how old you are, yes. But there they are at the Canadian Tower, whatever, lining up. Excuse, excuse me, go ahead. You know, like, yep. like more than 90% are right. just doing it perfectly. The and other 10%, you, you, know, you always get an idiot and good for them. You know, I'll, I'll pray for them. You know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's my mother. But would yeah, say. the vast majority of them are, yeah, are doing a fine job, pulling together. It's been amazing. It's so it's very Canadian of well, them. Well, that's good. So I'm going um, well, I'm, I'm to make you a deal. I don't know, you must have a deal that you do for people that want the camera and the whole nine yards sort of thing. Well, what we do with the solo jumps is we mount a camera just inside the door of the airplane. So right. it's taking video of you getting out, falling away, and your parachute opening up. Yep. Um, tandem jumps, that's not as practical because they're doing a much longer free fall. So right. with the tandem jumps, we'll send up. Usually you have the instructor with a special wrist mount for the cameras right. to record the experience. Is there any, a way that I could get a wrist mount for her to the, use? Yeah, <laughs> in uh, in 200 jumps. In 200 jumps. Ah, That's okay, the well, regulations that oh, we work Oh, is that the regulation? Under. You can't yeah. wear a camera? Well, they don't want... The, well, the, the biggie is there are some safety considerations in there that you might not expect. Of course, there's always the danger of something snagging on a camera mount, sure. like the lines of the parachute, which... Yeah wouldn't work that makes out sense. especially well yeah, that makes totally sense but what you might not expect is just even the little distraction that the camera gives you you're thinking oh i want to get a, a better image of that over there that and would be focus me. is that would be me uh, more on the camera the and the less the um, <laughs> less on landing yeah, yourself I safely my, yeah, i can see myself and doing i have that, seen people think. with actually the last one i saw he had over 100 jumps yeah and got himself focused on getting the video he wanted and put his parachute down in the trees over here. It's like, oh. well, at least it was his own parachute. He was fine. Yeah. And the parachute, as I recall, was fine after we, you know, picked the twigs and things out. So did out, he get the picture? I don't think he got quite the video he was looking for because I don't think he was looking he for video of crashing through the branches of the trees. <laughs> so he got a better one. There you go. But uh, yeah, a little distraction goes a long way up there. So yeah, we, sure, we got to right? stay focused. Well, that's great. So what I'm going to do is I appreciate you taking the time today to, to get this portion of it. Not and all. then when I come back, I'll, I'll do some narrative and stuff. And maybe we can chat a little bit more then just on the way through with the phone or whatever. Who, who knows? Okay. We can sort something out that way. And then um, I, I'll, I'll get the footage off of me jumping out of the plane when I can. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 
I'll do, a, but I'll do a trailer for your place here and post it, and like I'll Sounds absolutely good. do that. And Sounds uh, good. yeah, yeah, I, I, I do that for just about anybody there. Everybody has their own interest, you know. There, everybody, every day, you know, you have yours, I have mine. Everybody has theirs. So when I do something like this, I try to find out what's the, the main, which is business. You know, you have to do business here, and you have to uh, so sort of get it out there. Was so I'll, I'll do some trailers and. I'll get some video stuff. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. So it's Adam, right? Right. She's oddly, you know, so you have any idea what it's like to forget the interview, the name of somebody you're interviewing? It's bloody embarrassing. But I, I do it all the time. Go, go, I, I'm so bad with names. <laughs> oh, so well, bad with names around here that if I remember somebody's name for, you know, I meet them and then two minutes later, it's like, yeah. Uh, and then I go back and check the paper. I get mental, fart, it mental farts, yeah, mental blocks. You know, I, yeah. I'll, I went to introduce my brother one. I'd like you to meet... Uh, yeah, I'm 60. He's now, my older brother, and I'm 63, and I couldn't remember his name instantaneously, you know. And, yeah. But if you had a number, I'd remember the number, no problem. Yeah, no doubt. No I doubt couldn't remember every name. phone number I've ever had. I can't remember my own name half the time. <laughs> so basically, your starter jump, $300, doesn't matter if it's solo or tandem, right. plus HST. Yep. Phone and make an appointment. What is the phone number again? 1 800 361 5867. 1 800 361 5867. Okay, great. So we have that. So if you want to challenge yourself, come on out. Make the call. Come on out. Push the edge to the envelope. So what you could do for me then is if you could lean forward and say goodbye and hit that red dot. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. You get to fill out the COVID form. Yeah, I will. I get to go yell at people to get in the airplane. There will be some excitement shortly. What's on your bucket list? Mine? Skydiving. <laughs> Gary, good morning. Good morning. Now, you're already probably wondering why I videoed your back. Why did you video All right, your back? well, I'm going to let your family here find out. The harness that you're wearing has a specially big word on it. Turn so they can see your back. What's that big word that he's got on there? Danger. Danger. Yeah, here we go. You're wearing a harness today. You can turn to me now, Gary. You're wearing a harness that has the word danger on it. What's going on, buddy? Parachuting. You're at the Parachute School of Toronto in Baldwin, Ontario, and today we are going skydiving. 13,500 feet. Yay, we got the family here going, yay. We're going to go to 13,500 feet. We're going to plummet Earth with 200 kilometers an hour for 60 seconds. Gary, I got to ask you, man, how does that make you feel? Awesome. Atta boy. There you go. Wait. Good for you. Good for you. Gareth is going to be your tandem master. Just, just to let you know. I'm Steve. Hey, just to let you know, everyone kept asking me, why would I jump out of a perfectly good plane? What for you jump out of a perfectly good airplane? I've explained to them, the plane is not perfectly good. That's exactly correct. Good answer. No such thing as a perfectly good airplane. Especially ours indeed. <laughs> waivers. The good news is you're going to have a lot of fun. All you got to do, man, is smile, wave, blow kisses at the camera, and have generally as much fun as you possibly can. Awesome. You ready to make the skydive? Ready to Let's go. Let's go have fun. Here, hit me up. Yeah. You can do it too. There you go. Oh, here we go. Come up over here, buddy. Here we go. Here we go. High five. There you go. All right.
Mr. Madsen getting out that door. Right back there, what's going through the noggin? You know, it's so exciting. The higher you get, the more you feel the adrenaline raise. Yeah, lots of fun. You sure to feel a little bit no more nervous now, just a little bit? A little bit. Good for you, man. You are, I think you're the calmest passenger I've seen in quite a while. Let's lose the goggles. That was so much fun. Good for you. That was the easy part. The hard part, trying to describe that whole thing in one word. You know what? You can't describe it in one word. Try. Try. Just the thrill of a life. Good for you. Welcome to Scat Island, buddy. Welcome to Scat Island. That was truly the thrill of a lifetime.